I saw the movie uh, Tomb Raiders yesterday. This is a movie review for Christians, trying to encourage my fellow Christians to pray the movies. Sometimes you won't even find something in there that you want to specifically pray about, but you should just think of other things than why you're watching to pray about. Pray for your family. Pray for your enemies. Pray for victims of terror. Pray for terrorists to con convert to Christ. Pray for our leaders. Pray for prisoners, widows, orphans, unborn babies. Lots of things. The list is endless. But uh, the movie itself, Tomb Raider, is pretty good as far as just secular entertainment, action, kind of a uh, female Raiders of the Lost Ark, that kind of uh, sums it up in a nutshell, not searching for an ark, but they're searching for a tomb that supposedly has, if opened, uh, or taken out, could, could bring a curse upon the whole world. And that, the father in the movie is, is a professor, and the girl, the main character, Lara Croft, an heir of the gigantic Croft Industries, starts out in the UK, but she refuses to uh, accept her inheritance. So, as the movie's starting out, she's like a, a courier, just earning basic wages, carrying uh, packages on her bikes around town. She's also into MMA, fighting, and the movie actually starts out with her fighting in a fight, a practice fight, which she loses, and then as she's in the locker room, the owner of the gym comes by and reminds her she hasn't paid and points to a he points to a sign that says, No pay, no play. That's how poor she is, but she's actually an heir to the I don't know, the movie makes it look like a billion dollar industry. But for some reason she doesn't want it. Her father, in fact, has uh has gone missing for many years. And nobody exactly knows where. Uh, and she's kind of haunted by the loss of her father. They have several flashbacks during the movie of her with her father as a young child at their mansion. And uh, the movie progresses. periodically interacts with the woman who's like the, sec the, you know, the executive secretary or whatever you want to call it for the Croft Industries and finally, finally uh, convinces Lara to come and simply sign the papers that makes her the, uh, the heir and then basically the CEO of the whole corporation. And she's about to sign it. She has a pen in hand and then she starts playing with this thing that her father used to always kind of kind of like a elaborate Rubik's cube type thing. You switch and you you know, you twist and you turn and and, and she makes sense out of it somehow, and then something clicks in her brain. And, oh, and there's a note inside it in, in the picture, a picture of her with her dad. It's the last thing I guess her dad left for her. And a key, I think there was a key in there too. And she doesn't sign the papers. She, she, she suddenly jumps up and says, I got to go. And she leaves. And the next thing you know, she's at the... Uh, at the um, crematorium or cemetery, whatever you want to call that, where they 
with their bodies. I guess the ashes of the body and they. They, uh, I think your dad's name is on there, Richard Croft. They guess they buried him, just assuming he's dead. They, or at least they gave him a, a tombstone. She pushes the letter on on the uh, tombstone. The niche. And they, something clicks, and then she, and then there's a a keyhole and she has the key like a skeleton key and turns it and shazam a door opens and she finds his little hideout not where he not where he is but where he keeps all his kept all his notes and computers and everything it's like a giant office she looks around and sees all the things there and there's a video camera she that her father left for her and it says play me a little note says play me and so she does and it's her father talking saying if if you're watching this it probably means I'm dead and asked her to burn all his notes and everything that have to do with this remote island where he's been exploring for some something and uh, but she ignores the the instructions and starts to read and try to find out what's really going on and puts one plus one together and has some has a book and some notes you know, like a treasure map. Next thing you know, she's on her way to Hong Kong. She sells this amulet to get there. She still doesn't have any money, really. But she gets enough for this amulet. And away she goes. And she's on her way to Hong Kong. And then from Hong Kong, she she reached she her purse gets stolen, but her bag, her backpack. She chases the guy down and, and then she finds the guy that she's supposed to meet there that she found in the book. And he's kind of a drunk at the time when they meet. But he agrees to take her to this island even though he's, it's in the so-called Devil's Sea. And Rather than tell the rest of the story, it's, it kind of becomes an adventure, terrifying. Uh, I guess, you know, the big takeaway from the film is those kind of adventures, I mean, any kind of adventure where you're taking some risks, I think really is what God, is where God speaks to you most. If you're too safe, play it too safe in life, you won't hear, you won't get the most out of what God wants for you, even though it might cost you things, even your life maybe, but I would think it's worth it if it saves your soul. So let us remember that we should be able to take, this is a young girl, and she goes off and does it all by herself. She really does a good job in the movie, too, as an actress. Her last name is Vikander, I think. So, uh, uh, remember, be willing to take risks. Not, not stupid risks. Not just, like, go rock climbing, but things that will serve the kingdom, that have a mission purpose, bringing the gospel, the good news to others. That's my encouragement for you. Hear our prayer, Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.